Uh, Peter Schiff, thanks for coming on with us. Oh, thanks for having me on, Alex. Where should we start? <laughs> well, you started talking about the price of gold. You know, it actually had a little bit of a decline this week because, you know, the Federal Reserve minutes were released on Wednesday. This is for the meeting they had about six weeks ago. Sure, I'm in the aggregate though. It's 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 big up on the year, right? So Oh yeah. I mean it's up. I mean it started the year, you know, below eleven hundred. It got down to ten fifty uh when the Fed just raised rates uh in December. But it's had a pretty big run. But the, the gold stocks have gone up a lot more. In fact there are silver stocks that have gone up three, four, some five hundred percent since their January lows. So that's that's been the biggest move. But the pullback started uh with the Fed coming out and talking about the fact that if the job market continues to improve and if the economy continues to get better, that they might raise rates in June. And of course, everybody interpreted that to mean, oh, the Fed's going to raise rates in June when they didn't actually say that, but they talked about it. And but that's that tease is, you predicted five or six times that they indeed did. Then you correctly, I remember, predicted a month before they would go up a little bit. And then now you're predicting they're going to keep it the same. I mean, you've been pretty much dead on. Yeah, you know, I don't think they're they're going to raise rates in June. I mean, it is possible, again, they could make that mistake because they, they did make the mistake from their perspective of notching them up in December. And you did and predict, all, I hate to interrupt you, but yeah. it's good to be, you know, interrupt me. You did predict <laughs> that the QN Limited would not work, and it has not worked. No, and they're going to do it again because they don't, they don't, they never admit their mistakes. But what's going to happen is that they're, they're probably not going to raise because if you actually look at what's happened in the last six weeks, not only has the labor market not strengthened, it's actually weakened considerably. And the economic data that's come out over the last six weeks on balance has been worse than expected. Uh, so, you know, if the Fed was hoping to get, you know, better news, they didn't get better news. And, you know, I think the news is actually worse than the government reports because I don't think we're telling the whole story. The only numbers that are really coming up are the inflation numbers. And for some reason, they're saying this is a good thing. You know, the fact that inflation is picking up you know, apparently is progress, according to the Fed. You know, the la the CPI we just got showed an annualized increase in consumer prices, if you multiply it out, at 6% a year. And this is supposed to be good news. It's supposed to represent progress towards price stability. No, it's not. We're going in the opposite direction. If you want prices to be stable, you don't want them to go up at all. The fact that they're going up faster doesn't mean you're getting closer to your goal of price stability. You're getting further away from your goal. What does it signify that oil's gone up some? Well, oil's going up because the dollar's reversed. The dollar's going down, and the dollar did, you know, move up a little bit when, on the Fed announcement. But interestingly, oil didn't move down very much, and oil right now is just below forty nine dollars sure. a barrel, and we're up over seventy percent from the lows. I mean, we were down below thirty. We got down to like twenty seven, twenty eight. But yes, we're still below the $100 a barrel we were at, what, a year and a half or two years ago, wherever we were up there. Sure. But you know what? We can get up there very quickly. Uh, we don't, if the Fed doesn't hike rates in uh, in June, I think they're setting the dollar up for a big drop and another huge run up in gold and oil. And in fact, even if the Fed does raise rates, I don't think that's bearish uh, for gold because what happened to gold the last time the Fed raised rates? It went way up. Because these rate hikes are too little too late. Sure, to I understand. Let me ask difference. you this question. I, you're dead on. I, I think you're probably the most accurate guy out there of everybody we interview. So, so let me ask you this then. Why is the media right that we're finally in big financial problems? Uh, how bad is it globally? You've got all this default stuff in places like Puerto Rico. Now they have a deal with Congress. Uh, you've got all this bail-ins more in Europe. You've got all these pension funds going belly up. Uh, you've got the Saudis can't pay their bills. I mean, what is going on? Well, I don't think the media is coming close to acknowledging how bad the economy actually is. I mean, I think if you just look at how popular Bernie Sanders is and Donald Trump, oh, that's a good indication of how bad the economy is, because both the left and the right know how bad it is. And so they're both grasping for straws, looking looking for something different. But, you know, you mentioned Puerto Rico. And the interesting thing about Puerto Rico is Puerto Rico is broke. I mean, that's pretty obvious. Even the governor admits that mathematically, you know, they can't pay their debts. But three years ago, they were just as broke. It's just that nobody cared because creditors weren't worried. They just kept lending the money even though they were broke and interest rates were down. So it's a cold sore. It's a canary in the coal mine. The fact that that's happening shows other big creditors are now overextended. Well, it just shows you that, you know, it's, it's all a question of it's never a problem until it is, right? So Puerto Rico was broke. But now it's a problem because the creditors figured out that they're broke. Well, America is more broke than Puerto Rico. Sure. That's a fact. It's just that our creditors haven't figured it out yet. 
But when they do, then Donald Trump is going to end up being right because all we can do is default. And if we don't default, if we print money, which now Trump is saying, oh, we don't have to default because we could print. Well, printing is worse than default because printing doesn't just wipe out the bondholders. It wipes out Value. anybody who owns U.S. dollars. Yeah. yeah, I agree with you. Trump is wrong on that front. I like him because he's sincere. Uh, you, you were Ron Paul's chief, uh, you know, economic advisor, and you advise others in Congress and testified, obviously, Peter Schiff. Uh, what would you advise Trump to do? I, I mean, I know the advice on the show actually gets to him. I know he, you know, tunes into what we have to say and our guests have to say uh, pretty much on a daily basis. Uh, what would you uh, say to Trump? Well, you know, it's hard to say what's the best thing for Trump, the candidate, to say. I mean, so far he's done a pretty good job as Trump, the candidate, but. If he actually wins, you know, the advice that I would give Trump, the president, is actually when he talked about some kind of restructure, that is exactly what we need because we can't pay back our debt, but we need higher interest rates. Now, Donald Trump said, hey, I'm a low interest rate guy. Low interest rates are part of the problem. Now, Donald Trump knows that if interest rates go up, we can't afford to pay our debt. So his solution is to keep interest rates low. But that doesn't work. That's part of the problem. That's why the economy can't have real economic growth. Sure, we'll end up but like we Japan need, if this continues. Yeah, we need higher interest rates. But then we have to admit that we have too much debt to afford higher interest rates. And we have to restructure. That is the painful reality that we have to sure. do. Sure, because yeah. if we don't restructure, we'll just finally either collapse or just go into stagnation. I mean, which one is it? Well, it'll be a massive inflation because if we if if we keep interest rates low forever, no matter how high inflation gets, then the dollar collapses and they keep printing and printing and printing. And then that type of scenario, runaway inflation, hyperinflation, that is much worse than a legitimate sure. restructuring. Yeah, well, like I'm no rocket scientist like you when it comes to mathematics and, 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 and economy. But it seems to me if they're creating tens of trillions more in derivatives and fake dollars and credit default swaps and all this crap that it's going to cause inflation. So where are they hiding all the inflation? Because to me, it seems like it should be much worse by now. You know, it's actually hiding in plain sight because first of all, the inflation is all the money printing, right? That's the definition. The consequence of inflation is that prices go up. But look, stock prices went way up. Real sure, estate so that's prices went back up. Sure. Yeah, look, look, uh, rare art went back up. You know, collectible cars went back up. I mean, asset prices have gone up like crazy. That is inflation. And of course, anybody who lives in America knows that the prices are going up. Look, rents are up about 8% year over year. Look at how much healthcare costs have gone up. Utilities are going up. Look at the price of food. Have you bought a steak recently at a supermarket? I mean, prices oh, are man. going up. It's just that the government is not doing an accurate job of reporting, and that is by design. So they're messing they with know. the numbers. Oh, I agree. Of course. I, I, I've been going to the same steakhouse for like 15 years, and 15 years ago, the steak was $25. I thought that was too much. The same steak I want is a hundred dollars, and I won't get it just because it costs a hundred dollars. A good ribeye now at the store it's like twenty five dollars. At a steakhouse it's a hundred dollars. I mean that same ribeye at the at the grocery store was like eight dollars five years ago. So you're right, oh, yeah. there's huge inflations. Huh. Yeah, I mean try to barbecue for your family. Try to how many people can still afford to put steaks on that barbecue? I mean a lot of people can barely. We afford have hamburgers. I mean, yeah. I mean I got a little bit of money just to run the operation, but still I'm not going <laughs> to buy steak at that price. Yeah, I mean, look, the standard of living is going down. I mean, Americans are working two or three jobs a piece, and they can barely make ends meet. You know, this economy is a disaster, and everyone wants to pretend that it's great because no one wants to admit that Obama is a complete failure, that the Federal Reserve was a complete failure, that everything the government has done has failed. So what happens next? You've accurately told us, I'd say about 95% accuracy, what's going to happen? What happens next, Peter Schiff? Well, it depends on what your time frame is. But, you know, I, I do think that we are either back in recession or so close to one that we will be in one shortly. And I, I think it's more likely that we're already there. But the question is, will the Fed reverse course and cut rates before or after the election? That's a little bit of a wild card. I think if it wasn't an election, they would just go ahead and do it. But I think, you know, the Fed wants to artificially stimulate the economy to help Hillary Clinton win. But they don't want to have to admit that the economy needs stimulus because that would undercut her message of trying to continue uh, the successful policies of Obama. Because if we're back in recession while he's still president, that proves that his policies were a failure. So the Fed is caught in a difficult position. And I'm not exactly sure, uh, you know, which poison they're going to choose. But they have to decide. But to just keep pretending that everything is great and then maybe even raising interest rates, 
that is probably going to help Donald Trump. What win. would you do? Sure, sure. What would you do then? It, what would I do? I mean, we wouldn't be in this predicament if I was there. But if you put me in today, you know, I'd be like one of the CEOs. You know, you, you get when you come in, you know, you want a clean house, right? You want to get all the bad news out. You want to throw everything out, including the kitchen sink, get it all out of the way. You know, sometimes they just want to blame the predecessor. But in this case, it would be the fault of my predecessors. If I was the head of the Federal Reserve. No, I understand. I so if you were the head of the Fed yeah. or the head of the Treasury or, or co-head of both, what would you do? Boom. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I would admit that everything that was done by my predecessors going back, not 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 Volcker, but but Greenspan and Bernanke and Young, that they, they everything they did was wrong. Right. I said, look. We got to raise interest rates, and I, I, you know, I'm trying to let the market set interest rates. But I tell the markets the Fed is not going to be in there. We're not going to be interve intervening. Which starts encouraging buying. investment again, not just free yeah. money. But we're not, we're not going to keep interest rates down. We're going to let the market push them however high they have to go, and I think they'd go pretty high. And I tell the, I tell the Congress we're not buying any of your paper. So you better balance this budget right now, or interest rates are going sky high. And if you can't handle the interest rates, then you better go. So to your you'd encourage rate. a real market again. Oh, yeah, I would I would tell the government there's no more easy way out. You level with the voters. Either you cut government spending. You know, if you want to raise taxes, you can try that. But I don't think that'll work. So you cut government spending. You negotiate with your creditors. But the gravy train is over. There's no more debt monetization. You're going to have to deal with the consequences of your profligacy. And I'm not, as a Fed chairman, I'm not going to enable it anymore. I would be an independent central bank, which is exactly what we need.